What is going on, Governors? Just cool here, and today we're gonna be talking about Tomoe, who might be better than some epic commanders. Hello my friends and welcome back in this video. We went and gathered a whole bunch of data and did a whole bunch of testing to answer a question that you have been asking. Is Tomoe good in the early game of Rise of Kingdoms? If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides where we help you figure out which commanders are best, not because of opinions, but because we've gathered the data, then you should like and subscribe. This is going to be one of those videos and there will be many more. Now, in this video, we wanted to answer the question, is Tomoe better than an epic? And if she is, at what point do you perhaps transition from using her to using other things. Now, we need to talk about why she is good, and her role is exclusively as a secondary commander. Uh, that is for a number of reasons. First and foremost, her active skill gives you 30% attack for three seconds. That's not too exciting, but okay. Uh, for a blue commander, I suppose we might expect even a little more. The second is a passive, increasing attack of archers by 5% and their march speed by 5%. Now remember, the second you bring something other than an archer to that same march, you lose the march speed bonus. They're always going to go as fast as the slowest unit in the army. Okay, now this is where she picks up steam. You gain an additional 20 rage when attacking the enemy. That's 20 rage a second. That's a lot of rage. That is a ton of rage. For perspective, uh, in the skill tree, my favorite talent is rejuvenate. That's 60 rage every time an active skill is used. Most commanders are cranking those out once every 10 seconds or so, uh, and you get one for the active commander and the secondary commander. So that's 120 rage every 10 seconds or so, every 9 seconds. Well, this is 200 rage every 9 or 10 seconds. Well, 180 rage every 9 seconds, 200 rage every 10 seconds. You get the idea. In addition, we elevate the skill damage by 15% when you're the secondary commander. So if you're pairing with a commander that's going to do big skill damage, this is a pretty decent little buff. 15% is not a small amount. Uh, to compare to a legendary commander, uh, the active skill damage of Esong in the fourth skill is boosted by 50%. I know that's a lot more, but like, this is a very powerful third skill. And the last skill is when using an active skill, reduce the current target's damage by 15% for two seconds. The way that should work is that uh, when the active commander uses their skill, it's going to reduce the target's damage by 15%. There's going to be a second of lull. Then the secondary commander, which is going to be Timo, is going to use another act or use an active skill at that point. It's going to reduce the damage of the target again by 15% for another two seconds. So you get four seconds of 15% damage reduction. It's actually very solid. Um, but all of this talk about what the skills might be, we need to go take this onto the battlefield and do some real testing. To do that, we're going to make our way into Ark of Osiris practice mode. Let's snap our way over. All right, to figure out whether or not Tomoe is a good secondary commander, we ran a bunch of tests. What you're watching now in Ark of Osiris is at 2x speed, and we're going to run a series of battles in the open field to figure out which commanders tend to do better. Uh, the point is not to prove whether or not this combo is better than some other combo, but to see how all of the different combos that we use compare to a stagnant, similar target we're going to use the same thing the battle against every single time. Uh, so in this case, we're using Kusunoki as the primary, Tomoe as the secondary, and we've got a Sun Tzu with Boudicca that we're battling against. We're going to battle against them the entire time for consistency sake. Um, now you would expect here that archers would win the fight. Uh, however, in this particular instance, Tomoe is not going to cut it as a secondary commander. We do lose fairly soundly in this matchup, and in the report we have uh, 57, almost 58,000 remaining for the opposing side. So we lost pretty soundly there. Uh, in this next test, we're going to use Herman, or sorry, Kusunoki as the primary again, uh, but this time we're going to use Boudicca as the secondary. So two epics, right? Um, let's see if 
Two Epics does better than Tomoe as a secondary. Um, now, Boudica, you know, is one of my favorite starting commanders. I'll put a card up in the top if you want to check out a video where I walk through uh, some of the commanders that I think you should start investing in in the early game of Rise of Kingdoms. And I think you can start to see here that the double epic combo is looking a good bit better. So in this particular matchup, we actually do think that the Expertise Epic is a better pick. And I want to emphasize for a moment the Expertise Epic is a better pick because you can get Tomoe much earlier in the game to a point where she is maxed out than you can an Epic. So there very likely would be a threshold upon which uh, the Tomoe is a better choice than some, like, 5-1-1-1 epic that is sitting in your roster. She did shockingly well compared to Boudica, and now you can see here the Boudica victory is imminent, uh, and we'll get a look at exactly how much we win by. Uh, it's not a coincidence, by the way, that in this video we're using Boudica in part because she is a commander I would expect you would have in the early game and is a good comparison point. So there we sort of flashed it on the screen for a second, uh, but we've got about 13,270 troops remaining. So, so a victory for the kusunoki Budica combo. Now we run uh, Herman and Tomoe. Perhaps this is a better pairing. Herman is much more focused on single target damage rather than Kusunoki's AoE, so I would expect this to do better, but what we actually start to see here is that it is doing worse than the Kusunoki pairing. Um, I'm not sure exactly why that would be the case. Uh, perhaps because Kusunoki is clearing debuffs and uh, Boudica is applying a debuff to this march, but that doesn't seem like enough reason here. Maybe it's because Herman's got some allocation of stats to march speed. Uh, the other thing I'll call attention to is that the builds are not identical on Herman and Kusunoki. This, of course, impacts the outcome of the battle. Um, we've got a skill tree build on our Herman because we're trying to chain silences. P.S. 83,000 remaining. In this case, it did worse than the previous test. Uh, now we're going to run the same thing we did with uh, Kusunoki. We're going to swap in Boudica. So now we've got a Herman Boudica lineup, and they're duking it out. Um, we have on our Kusunoki a Archer primary talent tree with some amount of points in the skill tree. So they are sort of inverse builds from each other, and, and I, I would attribute no small amount of the variation perhaps to that. Um, so here we see the Herman Boudica combo, and this is a good bit more even, but it is going to still lose out. Um, so this doesn't prove that Kusunoki is better per se, um, but what I wanted to prove is relative to the Tomo, or to Tomoe, how does the Boudica, the epic combo, do? We'll have that report in a second. We had 80,000-ish that were... Uh, remaining for Negan in the previous one, and in this one, he's going to have 40,000 remaining. So obviously, the Boudica is performing better. The Expertise Epic is performing better. We would sort of expect that, um, but it was closer than I would have thought, given the way that the skills read on that commander. Like, the active skill just increases attack by 30% for three seconds, and that's it. Here we've got a pairing that you'd expect to do pretty well, uh, Kusunoki and Herman. We're also going to run that the other way, Herman and Kusunoki. But I just wanted to offer a couple more comparison points, if you brought all epics, what that picture could have potentially looked like battling into the Sun Tzu Boudica. And by the way, all of these tests were done with no gear equipped, so there's no equipment on any of these commanders. Uh, it is worth mentioning that you know, all, the equipment only from the primary commander applies in these battles, and we just took all the equipment off. Um, so they are totally naked, no equipment applied. And this is looking closer than I remembered. The Kusunoki Herman lineup looks like it is going to eke out a victory here. Just barely, though. Just barely. And in a moment, we'll get a look at that report. What do we got here? 19,000 remaining. So this actually performed, I think, better than the kusunoki Boudica pairing. And, like, they both specialize in archers. We would sort of expect that, potentially. Uh, now we've got the Herman-Kusunoki pair. Let's see 
how this does. This is a skill tree primary, so we're cranking out the Rage Shen and the active skills, which also means Kusunoki is going to clear buffs more frequently, uh, or rather debuffs. But this is sort of surprising. It's not going to do as well as the previous. Um, again, that could be because of the Archer Tree. It could be because of the skill tree. Uh, what I wanted to show is more directionally, like how did these things perform to Tomoe. Um, my big takeaway from these matches is that Tomoe was remarkably close to the performance of an epic, right? Like all things considered, that was remarkably close to the performance of an epic. And I would make the argument that if you are at the point where you don't yet have all the expertise epics that you want to use, and you do have Tomoe in a very good place where she's maxed out, you certainly should consider using her. And the time where I see that being a, a, a you know likely, by the way, 21,000 uh, left for Negan in that matchup, um, the, the time where I see that being likely is in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms, when you've got a very, very young account in the first weeks of the kingdom's life, and you are trying to make a Sunset Canyon team. I think in that instance, you might consider using her for some amount of time until you ultimately get some epics that you can use instead. And I would make the argument that from this testing, Kusunoki seems like the better pair. And honestly, I think he's a better investment anyways for protecting your city. And it's probably the fourth or fifth epic I might work on as you're powering up your commanders. We did one other test here with another commander I really recommend in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms. That's Kusunoki with Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc is the third commander. I would recommend you expertise at an epic level. And that pairing does not do as well as I would have liked. Um, and the thing that that pairing is really more optimal for is supporting what is going on in the field. Here you can see 38,000 left for the Sun Tzu and Boudicca pair. Uh, we ran the uh, Kusunoki Boudicca pair one last time just to see if it does as well as uh, it did the first time around um, for you know some amount of consistency in the data. Obviously, this is not run to statistical significance. We don't have the time or the energy to put that together. Uh, but if you're considering using Tomoe on the battlefield in the very early game of Rise of Kingdoms, I think that is not a bad choice. My recommendation to you, however, as you're exploring this, is to not take her above level 30, which is what is required to unlock the fourth skill on her. In fact, if you're really sneaky about it, you can use the special stars to maybe do that at even lower experience. There's no value leveling up a secondary commander beyond the uh, minimum level required. Here we go, uh, 34,000 remaining for the Kusunoki Boudicca. It actually did better the second time around. Okay, some concluding thoughts as we wrap up this video. Tomoe, I think, would be a good pick in the very, very early game. Don't level her up above 30. I took her to 34 and then realized, like, wait, there's really no point continuing to level up the secondary. The talents only apply for the primary commander, and she should always be a secondary commander. You don't need to put equipment on her because she's always the secondary commander, so that doesn't matter. Um, if you're rocking archers, and, and, and I would stick probably to an archer pairing, so at least you're getting the benefit of this over here. I suppose... That's the only thing she's doing that cares about archers. I mean, she's not doing all that much. If you don't care about the march speed, maybe you could even pair her with someone else. Like, if you wanted to pair her with, like, Joan of Arc as the secondary, like, I don't love it because you're, you're not even getting the skill damage bonus, but you are going to get boatloads of Rage Shen. That commander pairing is going to ch just ch be charging out the Joan of Arc buff with all of that insane amounts of Rage Gen. Um, with that said, after a couple months, she is going to be cute, but not good. So you're going to want to very rapidly transition off of Tomoe as soon as you've got epics that are looking like they are nearly expertise or are expertise. Um, but up until that point, I'm going to give her a strong recommend, and if I were doing a jumper and not spending any money at all, I would pretty seriously be looking at using her. The thing I will also say 
is I would not use your universal sculptures to try to max her out. Um, I think that it is far more important to be using your universal blue sculptures toward Constance. That is a better invest. All right, that's enough about Tomoe. Uh, she is actually a pretty cool historical figure. You might want to go check that out. But if you did enjoy this video, drop a like on it. Consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms content. And until next time, you have fun smashing the...